Welcome everybody to the Talk From The Top show. My name's Alex and I am your host. And our guest today is the founder of Ellis Kitchen, Mr. Paul Lindley, OBE. Hi, Paul. How are you? Hi, Alex. I'm really good. How are yourself? I'm doing uh, very good, actually. So um, uh, in the same year that you launched Ellis Kitchen, um, I was born and apparently I, I liked it a lot. But <laughs> what do you think was the standout feature that made Ellis Kitchen so successful? Okay, well, wow, that makes me feel old. But I guess a uh, big thank you to your mum and dad for, for using you up at Ella's Kitchen. And look what it's done for you. It's like a, a smart, good looking, brave, strong young man that's made. So good stuff. So to answer the question, really, I, I think the answer is in innovation. Before Ella's Kitchen, baby food hadn't changed for two generations maybe, maybe 30 years. Um, it was in jars, it was kind of orange, it was kind of like four or five different recipes and no one had done innovation. And what the supermarkets really did is they wanted mums and dads to come into the store to buy the baby food cheap and made a loss on it so that they'd spend money elsewhere. So it wasn't kind of, they weren't driving people to try and get baby food. And I thought that was like totally wrong. I'd had my baby Ella, uh, that's how the name came along, and and and, you know, I knew that having a baby is the most emotional time of your life. So I didn't really understand why the baby food businesses weren't doing brands that were emotional and authentic and real. And I think that's the point of difference that we had. So the innovations that we did is we brought some new recipes with kind of weird mixtures of ingredients that no one had been brave enough to do before, but we, we thought would work because we thought mums and dads tried at home. So we mixed fruits and vegetables together and we added some little different things that other people weren't doing. Um, and they, they were different. Then we had the packaging, which was completely different to the hard glass jars and the flexible packaging. And that packaging was really convenient for parents. So they, you know, if the baby didn't finish the, the meal, they could put the cap back on and put it uh, away or put it in a handbag or a day bag for the, for the days out. So it made the meal last all day. Uh, babies could use it themselves or use it with a spoon and it was flexible and, and kind of um, tactile. Um, so no one had done that. And then the brand itself, you know, as I said, it was about my daughter. And it was trying to use the emotion of we're just a normal family, like your family was when you were a baby. And we were, I was trying to re relate to your parents that I'm just a father. I'm trying to do the best for my uh, daughter. I've tried to create some, some foods that would be best for your son um, and try and use the language and the coloring and everything to appeal to the child and the parent, but also to the, to the baby. So, you know, bright colors. And then the final innovation, uh, the reason I was, went into business was different to these international businesses because they were there for their public shareholders to make money, as much money as they could for them. Um, and I was like, I, I'm doing this because I have a purpose and a mission. What's driving me to do it, which isn't to make the money, it is to help kids have a better relationship with food and therefore be healthier. And, and I think that's the crucial thing that helped it grow and grow and grow and grow um, to becoming the biggest baby food company in, in the UK. Uh, within a few years. Uh, so um, you just said that um, it, uh, it quickly became the um, biggest baby food company in the world, but on the way to becoming the biggest baby uh, food company in the world, did you make any mistakes and what would you do differently now if you came across them? Loads. And I've made loads of mistakes today and I bet you've made loads of mistakes today and I bet your mum and dad have made loads of mistakes today and everyone watching this will have done because that's what we do because we're human beings. We make mistakes every day. We don't know everything. We try stuff. Some of it works, some of it doesn't. And the crucial thing is learn from your mistakes. You know, we've talked about Ella's Kitchen, my, and she's, that's named after my daughter. I've got two children, and I've got a son called Paddy, and Paddy's bathroom was my second business, which was shampoos and bubble baths and all things like that in a similar sort of vein to Ella's Kitchen. And um, that business doesn't exist now. We're not talking about that because I made too many mistakes uh, of that that I tried to correct many of them, but then I worked out the point where this is just not, I, I can't make this right. And, and, and therefore so I decided to stop the business. So, you know, don't be frightened of failing and mistakes is my, my thing. As long as you recognize them and you work out quickly whether to continue and adapt or whether to stop. So you are um, extremely successful, so you must have a lot of advice, but um, what would you say to young people who are looking to follow the same career path as you? If you're saying the career path is entrepreneurship, um, it's not for everyone. Okay, it's not this, it, it, it's the certain skills and mindset, more importantly, perhaps, that you need to be able to make it successful. Because it's hard, hard work, because you've got to find something that nobody else has tried to do before successfully, if you're going to find that gap in the market. 
And first of all, you've got to find, you know, you've got to understand that there is a market in that gap and that, that you know, that, that there is a sustainable business in there. Then it's quite lonely, in fact, very lonely, because no one really understands what you're going through because you're juggling all these skills, all these different attributes to business, whether it's marketing and sales or legal or financial or human people, people, um, human resources. Um, and nobody kind of, you're juggling all this and nobody kind of get a handle of what, what you know, the, the, all the pressures that's on you. So, so that part's difficult and it's hard work, but you've got to have had the idea of why it's different. So you need to be tenacious in that. So it's not an easy option, but it's so rewarding if the reason you're doing it is fulfilling a higher purpose, something that's in you than just, oh, I've got an idea. This is my, I'm going to make money. I'm going to set up a business and I'm going to copy something else and I'm going to make it work. And I don't think you'll make much money doing it that way. And I don't think you'll be fulfilled as a person. So, so, but if you're one of those people that really wants to do it, then I would say the first thing you really want to do is understand and write down right at the beginning, why, why are you doing it? What is your why? That's the, that's the thing that, because unless you understand that, I don't think you're going to be able to, be able to articulate what you're doing to anybody else to get investments or to get customers or to get suppliers or people to work for you. You want to understand your why and you've got to be able to articulate that with passion and authenticity of this is the reason we set up this company. Great. Um, so you won an, an OBE, which is a great achievement, but uh, who, who gave it to you and uh, why did you win it? <laughs> okay um well i'm probably the wrong person to ask because you don't apply it's like just happens i got i got i got a letter um and i i got it from the queen i had to go to uh windsor castle and she was brilliant and uh stood there in her 93 94 years old and uh had a little chat and gave me uh the, the medal i advocate and i uh, a campaign for a lot to do with children's rights and human rights and the way we should change capitalism and business and things like that um so so for the welfare of children I, that's what they cite uh, the citation was for um and uh you know incredibly honored to be picked out um and i think you know <coughs> when i reflect back and i guess this is my biggest kind of pass on to you and you to your uh, to your viewers uh, and um, everyone watching is um, uh, you know i 've just been on this incredible journey that there 's nothing special about me at all right I, I had an idea I was smart about the way of implementing that I took my opportunities I was thankful for the privilege that I have being born at this time in this body at this place um, and uh, recognize that there is privilege in that and that I then can use that to work with others to share that and to to to, to try and improve improve things around me. Um, but but the, the bottom line is nothing is impossible. Now, one of my heroes, in a way, um, is Muhammad Ali. You know Muhammad Ali, right? Perhaps the greatest sportsman ever. And he has this just fantastic um, quote that I often think about when stuff is really tough. And it's not one of these sort of giveaway quotes that like is just fluff to inspire you. This, you know, you know what Muhammad Ali did and you know how he got there. And it, it, it was um, so much hard work and, and, and determination using the skills that he had. And so his quote is all about impossible. And he says, impossible is just a big word thrown around by small people who find it easier to live in the world they've been given than to explore the power they have to change it. Impossible is not a fact, it's an opinion. Impossible is not a declaration, it's a dare. Impossible is potential. Impossible is temporary. Impossible is nothing. If you believe that and you work really hard, you be you rather than what somebody else wants you to be, and you be brave because people are going to laugh at you, ignore you, you know, put you down and all of that, if you could be like he was and like a number of people are, then impossible is nothing. And my journey of the prime ministers and queens and business leaders and everybody that I've had the privilege to meet and I had, you know, no, no right to, um, uh, then things are possible. And, you know, it starts with a belief in yourself and a bravery to take the first step and tell people what you think. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for your time, Paul. It's, uh, it's been a great interview. Hopefully this can inspire young people everywhere. Uh, just, just thank you, um, Paul. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely my pleasure, Alex. Good luck with everything. Thank you.